watching the series, I think they will have wonderful series against New Zealand. I think that's a very good note to end on. Thank you both. Thank you. Overcast morning at Lords, a capacity crowd, many of them I'm sure remembering the occasion two summers ago when these two teams met in the final of the NatWest and Middlesex got home off the last ball in a really dramatic climax. Now this Benson and Hedges final is important to both teams, both teams having departed from the 60 overs competition in midweek and Kent indeed now seeking a record fourth success in the Benson and Hedges. Let's have a look at the two teams. Kent on paper looking the better batting side, they bat a long way down, and Middlesex in theory at least, the stronger bowling combination. Chris Cowdery, the Kent captain, joined there in the middle by his younger brother Graham. Graham Dilly was Mark fit to start, that was a relief for Kent, their England fast bowler, and they preferred uh, Eldine Baptiste, their West Indian all-rounder, to the Australian Terry Alderman. And Middlesex, Graham Barlow, their uh, opener for many years, has had frustrating injury problems and it's Andrew Miller, former Oxford skipper, who will be opening with Wilf Slack. And it looked to be a good morning to bowl, so I wasn't uh, surprised at all, nobody else I imagine, when Christopher Cowdery won the toss and decided to ask Middlesex to bat. Tinger Green in the pitch and uh, possibility of Sun later for the side batting second. The score then is two for nothing in the Middlesex innings. We're in the first over and it's Dilly bowling to Andrew Miller. I don't think they'll take the overthrow. Miller had gone through too far there. Slack came and then stopped and then came again. But Miller had a good 10, 12 yards to go to get back, even to the crease at his end. Yes, there's no doubt that uh, Miller should really have been screaming at Wilf Slack no there. Slack there getting the thin inside edge. The ball would have missed off stump. But there's no doubt about it. When it hit it, it certainly removed it right out of the ground. And the vital thing here for Kent is that uh, they've got Mike Gatting in against the new ball. Okay, he's got a lot of runs, but uh, probably he's due for a failure. And if he failed at this stage, that would really put Kent bang on top. also a very quick ball. Well, as I said, Graham Dilley might pose problems for the right-handers, and he certainly did there. The ball going up the hill, but also bouncing pretty high as well. Very fine delivery indeed, that. 13 for one. Five overs gone here at Lords. Baptiste about to bowl to Miller. <laughs> Past Cowdery, a second slip. again. Yeah, it's quite a decent stroll from Graham Dilley. Good off target with uh, the wide and there's people in the wrong spot with the three no balls but once again he's gone past that outside edge but no bounce through to the keeper. Baptiste bowled to Miller. a long chase for Underwood. It'll be three runs. Gary might uh, thought in terms of an extra one. Slowed up a little bit by the damp is up here. First over from Chris Cowdery. And he's come on instead of Graham Dilly. Cleared. Yeah. 
brave shot by Gatting. He looked to play that there intentionally. The upturned, open face of the bat, and it just skimmed over the fingers of point. Joe Garner would certainly have snapped that up. <clears throat> And there it goes again. Now that's played much better. So the practice one pays off. And it's very interesting to study the open face of Mike Batting's bat. He turns the face upwards and plays it over point intentionally. Yes, when you bowl at Mike Gatting, he hits the ball very square on the offside. And uh, within playing it so square, it goes very quickly. But a very difficult man to bowl at. He certainly can't afford to bowl short of him. You like the way that one came off. He really tipped that away square on the offside for four without any trouble at all. Delightful shot. Beautiful shot, that. Oh, another cracking shot. Chris Calgary over pitching. And Andrew Miller knowing exactly what to do with it. 51 for one. And a change of bowling from the nursery and Richard Ellison. Always going for four. It's Chris Tavery at first slip, but it was very much a second slip catch. And Mike Gatting really has been flashing hard outside the off stump, He's not holding back at all. Well, Anderson's having a very good morning here. He's got the ball to move in the air, away from the batsman, and the odd one nipping back off the seam. And Mike Gatting in a bit of a knot there. <laughs> Marvellous catch. Beautifully judged. Mike Gatting, caught by Stephen Marsh at the bowling of Ellison. And that was beautifully taken. And the interesting fact here is the, the room left there by Tavery for Marsh. Tavery's at second slip, so Marsh really has to go for anything that's uh, around the first slip area. Kent just beginning to need that wicket badly as the partnership built up. They put on 66, Gatting and Miller. Ellison back to his blistering best. A little bit wider than the Gatting delivery, but the same result. Remarkable record. Clive Radley, such a popular figure. And he's an amazing record in these cup finals. It's his seventh cup final. And Chris Cowdery is going to put the pressure on Clive Radley straight away. He's taking a break and bringing back his quickest bowler, Graham Dilly, into the attack. To be quick. <laughs> Ken supporters throughout the crowd were shouting, he's out. But in fact, it just, uh, he might just have made it. Very close call. Derek Underwood. <laughs> That's what Bradley did. 
did in one of the earlier B&H matches down at Canterbury. He got down the track to Underwood and drove. Hit him away from leg stump through the offside. Now it's Chris Cowdery to come back. Cowdery's been the expensive one in the Kent lineup. And one of the problems he's had is giving Miller a bit too much room outside the off stump. And another wicket for Kent Cowdery after being quite expensive has struck and dismissed Miller. He was the top scorer for Middlesex and that's a cruel blow for the home side. And Andrew Miller absolutely livid with himself. Nothing very spectacular about this Cowdery delivery. He scored a lot of runs on the offside, looking to play the ball square of the wicket, but just getting the outside edge. I don't think he'd be very pleased about getting out that way. He'd done all the hard work, and then uh, just an indifferent little push shot under the offside. Three catches to Steve Marsh. Chris Cowdery to Clive Radley. Fine stroke here by Clive Radley. A little bit wide, but he kept his head down and brilliant shot through the covers. The centers get a long way forward when he's driving that ball. So from the nursery end, Derek Underwood to Bull to Paul Downton. A desperate effort by Paul Downton. Not really a controlled shot. And the 100 comes up for Middlesex. shot by Ty Bradley gave himself room outside the off stump and found a perfect gap in the covers but Bradley always a danger man in this one day cricket a bustling player twice in the over Derek Underwood has been driven through mid wicket by Ty Bradley and 12 runs came off that over. Richard Ellison is coming back at the nursery end. Confident shout, and Downton goes. Well, that's an important blow. It's the partnership that really had to last for Middlesex. Ellison's ball well in this match. Started by swinging the ball away, but the odd one nipping back like that off the scene. Being well supported behind the stumps by young Stephen Marsh. And this is John Embury. That one cut off in his prime. And now Downton gone, so very much depends on Clive Radley to hold the Middlesex effort together from here on in. Ellison to Embry. Not this time, but very well bowled and fine keeping. Good combination, Ellison and Marsh. Well, there's certainly Nick there, but it didn't quite carry to the keeper, just on the half volley. Graham Dilly so far, 10 overs, two maidens, one for 17, one over to go for him. 55 overs maximum per side, the Spencer and Hedges Cup final. Graham Dilly's bowled very well at Clive Radley this last couple of overs. Why? 
side of the man at deep point. It might need a dive. It did need a dive. Not sure Deadly will be so delighted about that. But a nice moment for Clive Bradley. He's reached a half century. Just the rescue operation Middlesex needed. 50 and 89 balls, six boundaries, nine minutes. Wendy's got him. Very clever work from Steve Marsh. There's no chance of a single there. Radley was coming down and then perhaps slipped a fraction. Brilliant work from Marsh, who already has taken three catches. Now they've got Radley on uh, a run out that the Middlesex player will very much regret. And John Embry really should have responded to Clive Radley's call. He's the senior batsman, he's the man in. Embry would have been in trouble as Radley is. It's a fine piece of work from the wicketkeeper. And Radley just out. 54. Bradley made. He went in Underwood's last over, 93 balls. He faced and a very good innings, good workmanlike innings, full of courage. New batsman Phil Edmonds. Eldine Baptiste taking up the attack from the pavilion end. There it goes. Chris Cowdery is the chaser. a lot of heavy overnight rain in London and John Embry must have thought he was got four runs for that shot but it wasn't to be he's feeling the strain of running a three late on in the innings Baptiste to Edmonds More field changes. Wide long on for Embry and no no long leg now. Neil Taylor up in the circle. That short fine leg. Well, that's done it. Last ball of Baptiste over. Embry trying something unorthodox. Has gone. It's 183 for seven now. John Embry out bowl Baptiste for 28. So with Chris Cowdery enforcing the leg side field, Embry trying to hit it on the offside. It's very difficult to hit a leg stump Yorker through the offside and out she goes. Simon Hughes, the new batsman for Middlesex. Are good enough to delivery to get past the middle six number nine just looking for a one to keep the scoreboard ticking along good solid blow from the strong Edmonds foot not quite to the pitch of the ball He'd made up his mind that one was going and he easily beat Benson at extra cover. It's a way down to third man, they'll take two. Last ball of the 55th over. Middlesex threatening early on to pull away but Ellison turning the tables and in the end, with uh, that faithful old pro, Clive Radley, not for the first time by any means getting top score, they achieved a total which was probably better than it looks on paper in today's conditions. Still might take a bit of getting. 
Now, let's look at the Kent bowling and the figures of Dilly, particularly interesting, and of uh, Ellison, and of course, of deadly Derek Underwood. So the Kent task, there it is, 200 runs to win exactly of 55 overs at 3.64 runs per over. The score is three for no wicket in their reply. We're joining the last ball of the third over in which have already been two wides and it's Cowan's bowling to Hinks. Strong shout from Norman Cowens. Impression I had was that it might have been high. Beautifully picked up by Simon Hicks. Norman Cowan's unable to generate the same pace as Wayne Daniel. Hinks plenty of time to pick off that long hop. So from the villain end now, it's uh, Wayne Daniel to bowl to Simon Hinks. It hurts inwardly and outwardly. Every ounce of effort going in from Daniel, carrying easily to Gatting, and down she goes. And it's Gowans to Benson. <laughs> and away he goes. Cowans has got through. First one goes down. Benson gone for one, 17 for one now. See it again, round about the off stump and not doing very much at all. But Mark Benson just fraction on the long line and the faint edge to fall down. Uh, Chris Tuckery comes out to join Hinks. the hut for Cowans. Not quite so good for Tabaray. Bit of bottle like that first ball. Well that was a good delivery. Enormous shout there and successful too. David Thompson doesn't even need to bother. Tabaray walks. And Middlesex are through again, 20 for two now. Tabaret going for three. And Kent struggling. Well, good touches by Mike Gutting here. Setting very attacking fields. And you can see there a clear outside edge from Chris Tabaret down to Paul Downton. But this was probably going to be Wayne Daniels last over before he had to have a break. And Mike Gatting set very attacking fields. Three slips, short leg, leg slip the lot. Trying to get that break. And Daniel thoroughly deserve that wicket. He's bowled beautifully out there. The batsman, Neil Taylor. Most attacking field set by Mike Gatting. Two slips gully, leg slip shortly. And beautifully bowled. Well, apart from getting quite a bit of movement, I think Wayne Daniel is probably doing everybody a little bit with pace as well. frustration coming in out there. And LBW hinks out. 20 for three now and Kent really struggling. It's been a great exhibition of pace bowling from these two. Wayne Daniel and Norman Cowns. Cowns has two wickets. Daniel one. Uh, 
looks pretty straight. Not too much problem for the umpire there. Chris Carvey is the new batsman and uh, he faces a sizable task. And it's Gatti himself who's going to bowl from the pavilion end to Neil Taylor. Pick up Roland Butcher there, cover. Ball seemed to have passed him and suddenly down went the right hand. A oh, lovely shot. Beautifully placed between the bowler and mid on. Norman Cowan's chases. The luxury of a front, front foot stroke for Cowdery. And that's Simon Hughes. That's a favourite shot of Neil Taylor, and that brings up the 50. It's been really hard graft for Kent out there. It's taken them 134 balls to get that 50. Interesting shot from Curry. That was <laughs> the walking shot. Here I come, <laughs> but without the ball. Oh, what a fantastic catch! John Embury. That was brilliant. Really was heading for a phantom second slip position. Simon Hughes deserved that wicket. He's beaten the bat a number of times. And Chris Cowdery just trying to steer the ball down. That's, uh, that's one you'll remember. John Embry's played a lot of cricket, but he, he won't take a better catch than this. And this is the sort of catch that sticks in the memory for a long, long time. See Cowdery just dabbing that ball. I think this is an easy run down to third man, but John Embry's leapt across. Shilton style and taking a brilliant catch. So let's just look at the batting to come after Graham Cowdery, Elvin Baptiste, Richard Ellison, Stephen Marsh, Graham Dilley, Derek Underwood. Plenty of uh, run potential there. Edmonds to Graham Cowdery. That's true. Well, that will be a relief. At least for Cowdery. And Graham Cowdery quickly picking up the length of that delivery, rocks back onto the back foot and beats the offside field just behind square. Up that Kent rate moving up to around the six runs per over. One run per ball. Doesn't sound a lot, but John Embury in the middle of a very canny spell. Time to bowl a maiden. John Embry, six overs, four maidens, none for five now, and a fantastic catch. Oh. Taylor slotted that. Good catch. Miller judged it beautifully. It wasn't easy. It was low by the time it got to him. He's taken the catch to give Edmonds the wicket. Now Kent a 72 for five. When you're told not to take your eye off the ball in taking a catch of any kind, this one in the outfield, there is a real good example of what that all means. Very nicely caught. Edmonds again, 72 for five. New batsman, Zeldi and Baptiste, they crossed. Really. 
Bradley. Not bad for a 41-year-old. Still pretty fit. Slack. Yeah, he's gone. Six. For a moment, Slack thought he had that in his sights. But all of a sudden, it was gone way over his head. Yes, Wolf Slack always seen the ball there. Full toss, hit pretty well. And thinking he was catching it, but then just clearing him. But there's about 10 yards of seats on the grass there, so the bound is a bit smaller than normal. And this was a time when uh, counties used to try and play for about 100 in the last 20 overs and have wickets in hand. And they've got 99 from 12 and five of the men out, so it's a very tall order there for Kent. Fielded, saved a single. Nothing getting past that uh, right hand of John Embry today. It's clutching everything. Yes, no wickets for John Embry, but uh, that's a match-winning piece of bowling in this type of cricket. It's not only how many wickets you get, it's how many runs you can see for over, and that's really a tremendous piece of bowling. take them on even with men on the edge he did that here and as he let go of the bat hit it with one hand he still managed to hit it for six and he hit the wicket keeper as well and Daniel seven overs one made and one for ten Baptiste takes advantage of the inside edge and goes again for two. Good running again. Well, inside edge there for Alden Baptiste. The rate needed is 8.56 per over. Just nine overs to go. And a missed stumping. Mistake from Downton, ball straight through. Wayne Daniel coming in to bowl to Eldine Baptiste. And that's hurt him. But even that protection, he'll still have a nasty bruise there. Cowdery's got it away. Too short from Daniel. Cowdery got a top edge over the keeper's head. And although it's difficult for these batsmen to pick up the ball in this fading light, a hard played edge can go anywhere, and that goes straight back over Cowdery's head and over the keeper, beating all the fieldsmen in four very valuable runs for Kent. Roland Butcher's there, have to be quick, and beautifully run by Baptiste. Magnificent cricket, great pick up and throw by Butcher, still couldn't beat the man going for two. Another great piece of fielding from Butcher, the throw's right on target, but Baptiste has done that last 22 yards in just a couple of seconds. The light there under Graham Cowdery's number, shining like a beacon. Yeah. And 
there's a very, very good half century for Graham Cowdery. Struggled a little early. But it's his third, uh, third half century in B&H games. 50 and 63 balls. So two sixes and two fours. Fielded brilliantly as well in Middlesex batting. Partnership gone. Edmonds with the slower ball defeated Baptiste. Now it's 141 for six. Kent needing 200 to win. Partnership of 69 between Graham Cowdery and LD and Baptiste. So Baptiste giving himself a lot of room, missing the cut stroke and losing off stump. Here's Daniel to Richard Ellison. And beautifully placed. Butcher again. And well run by Ellison. He's come back to the third. as the fielder just slipping going away to his right and Ellison has another four Ellison is playing with great common sense so far out there 150 up for Kent 153 for six Ellison was looking to hit this a bit straighter but he's got a thick outside edge and fortune favoring the brave Wayne will say sorry. This is a very unpleasant delivery, particularly in this terrible light. Anderson's got him away, and Cowdery's going to look for two. Have to be quick with Embry's arm. that be gathered in by Embury. Very, very well run again by Cowdery. And Radley's misfielded. They will get two. Pressure. Even the most experienced of them. Smashed it away through mid wicket. Ten off that over as well. What a brave fight by Kent. His famous father didn't have to play many shots like that in these circumstances, but I'm sure he'll be very proud of that one. And Mike Gatting in no hurry at all. He knows unless there's an absolute downpour that the umpires will be obliged in these circumstances to stay out there with only three overs to go. Butcher. But he can't get there. It's gone right over. What a beautifully timed stroke from Richard Ellison. A fantastic shot of Simon Hughes. And this has to be the shot of the day in these circumstances. Richard Ellison giving that the full flow of the bat back over the bowler's head for six runs. Yep, out. Radley. Graham Cowdery goes after a brave innings for 58. It's 178 for seven now. Ellison is 29. 
And that was a super partnership between Graham Cowdery and Richard Ellison. Cowdery 58 from 70 balls faced. Low full toss, a lot of bottom hand, but not able to clear the infield, and Clive Bradley gleefully hurls the ball in the air. New batsman is Stephen Marsh. ones there oh good save by Emery saved a run it doesn't sound much but it might make the difference at the end instead of four they only got three good delivery from Hughes right in the block hole on the leg side but Marsh managing to get it off his pad down to Embry who's hurtling round from long leg despairing dive stopping the ball going for four he goes crashing into the boards but the ball doesn't and that's the most important thing and a valuable run saved by Middlesex and he's gone Edmonds has done it and Gatting's ploy has worked that was brave captaincy and it came off Gatting decided that the slower bowler really needed to be hit. Whereas the seam bowlers add pace and give the batsman a chance to use the pace of the ball on the bat. Great piece of bowling by Edmonds. He kept his nerve. Ellison had to try and hit it for six. But what a lovely little cameo from Richard Ellison. Twelve runs needed. Four balls to go. And there it is. Six of the best. Keep it up in the block hole, son, was translated a little bit too literally. And this is a monster hit by Steve Marsh. Waist high full toss from Hughes. And Marsh has placed that in the boxes in the grandstand. Now they need them from just two balls. And just to remind you that Kent do need six runs, not five. Middlesex lost fewer wickets. And now, they need five runs from the last ball, providing Hughes doesn't bowl a no ball. He's got it away. Daniel is the fielder. Saved and a valiant effort. Two to Dilly, but it's not enough. And Middlesex have won the B&H Cup for 1986. So after a rather quiet, largely unglamorous day, it all came to a really rousing climax. What a finish. Splendid effort by the younger Cowdery, Graham, and by Baptiste, the useful 20, and uh, Ellison coming out there in the dark. And in the end, they could, couldn't quite manage it against some very, very keen Middlesex out cricket. And we'll see the Middlesex bowling now. Two for Cowens, one for Daniel, two for Hughes, none for Embry, super figures, 11 for 17, none, and three for Edmonds for 58. 
So Middlesex beating Kent in the final of the Benson and Hedges 1986 by two runs, and they've won a trophy every year in the 80s except in 1981. So a very happy captain, Mike Gatting, stepped up in the rain to receive the trophy. This is accompanied by the champion's flag and pennant. And after that, uh, David Garr, adjudicating the gold award winner, gave it to Embry, not of course just for his restrictive tight bowling, but for that quite magnificent catch, as good as any I've seen this summer. <laughs>